We're drinking some vermouth today. All right, welcome back to Drinking It In. I am your host, Chris Cassara. We are here to help you know more and drink better. And uh, after a little hiatus, not really a big hiatus, but you know, I try not to go more than a week uh, without releasing a video. It's been about a week and a half. Sorry for the gap, but we're coming back strong with a vermouth, a bit of a vermouth masterclass. So um, vermouth is a wine. Now it's fortified and aromatized. We'll get into that in a little bit, but it is a wine. So I thought it would be good to sort of treat it like a category and taste a few different styles and, um, and vermouths from different locations. So I have, we have a dry white vermouth from France, a blanc white vermouth from, uh, from France, or blanc vermouth from France, a red a sweet vermouth from Spain, a sweet vermouth from Torino in Italy, and a sweet vermouth from Italy uh, somewhere else. I probably should know where this one's from, but I don't. Um, anyway, so, blah, 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 blah. it does say Torino on it. All right, two sweet vermouths from Torino. So vermouth is wine, right? That is then fortified and uh, then aromatized. And so fortified means you're adding like a, a, a high proof spirit to the wine, stops the fermentation and fortifies it. Uh, typically, you know, whether that's, a, whether that's a brandy, you know, in some cases, uh, you know, but, but uh, think of it like that. Um, and then the, the wine is, and then the, well, the spirit, is aromatized and so what that means in the case of vermouth it's usually you know sugar or caramel and um herbs and spices so you know when when you're dealing with vermouth there's a lot of uh, there's a lot that can go into it and while most of us don't think about drinking vermouth on its own i think it's time to change that in most cases as you'll see uh you're probably familiar with vermouth from adding a sweet vermouth to maybe a Manhattan a whiskey based cocktail or adding a white vermouth to a uh, dry martini or in this case you know maybe something funky with a with a tequila but um you know I think we're, we're going to talk about vermouth as its own entity um because I think especially when it comes to the sweet vermouth you know they're just so delicious to drink on their own so I think it warrants um you know, its own uh, category. It's having, Vermouth's having a bit of a renaissance. You know, there are some places that are, are some restaurants and bars that are making their own vermouth, which is always a treat if you if you run across one of those. Um, a favorite of mine was back, it was in, when I was in London years ago, a place called Mele et Pere, Mele et Pere um, in Soho. I don't know if they're still there uh, now. This was a while ago. You know, it's funny, when I think back to my childhood, um, my mom used to, you know, when, when somebody brought up sweet vermouth, she would kind of, you know, give you one of those faces because I guess all of my aunts and some of my uncles um, used to drink, uh, you know, sweet vermouth on the rocks at the holidays. And uh, I'm sure it was probably a, uh, you know, a cheap version. Um, but, you know, I never understood it until I started exploring it a bit much, a bit more. And, you know, in the end, sweet vermouth, you know, on the rocks with a twist, it reminds me of Rome. And how the sun reflects off the building in the afternoons. Uh, sweet vermouth, rocks with a twist, please. For you, miss? The same. That's my favorite drink. Mine, too. It always makes me think of Rome, the way the sun hits the buildings in the afternoon. All right, hopefully the Groundhog Day fans out there um, enjoyed that terrible, terrible Bill Murray impression. I'm gonna move this stuff over here. And we're gonna start with the Noily Pratt. I'm gonna move this stuff over here. We're gonna start with the Noily Pratt Extra Dry Vermouth. Now, um, like I said, the the Extra Dry Vermouth. They're not. These are not typically, you know, wines or vermouths that I'll that I'll drink uh, on their own. I do tend to use them just for, uh, you know, as an add to the martini. But I think. You know, a good a good dry vermouth brings a lot to the table in a martini, and it can also as its own um, beverage. So these are going to be lean and crisp 
um, you know, you'll, you'll probably get, you know, it, and, and a little bitter, right? You'll get some bitterness and I tend to, in, in this one, I tend to like smell, smell some apples. So we'll see whether that's the, the case on the palate. actually surprisingly good. I haven't had this one on its own, I don't know, in, in, I was gonna say in ages, but I don't know, ever. This is actually a decent little drink. Um, I think with, with white vermouths, you would serve them, um, you know, over ice with, you know, like a lemon lemon twist. Um, sweet vermouth, you go, you, you veer into the orange, um, you know, with a twist of orange, but this actually remarkably clean, fresh, and um, quite nice. Um, there's a little citrus and apple, uh, citrus peel and apple on it, but um, as you can tell, I'm a little, I, I'm actually surprised that that uh, came across so well. So now this is an extra dry vermouth. We're gonna move into a blanc vermouth, which is going to be a little, um, a little sweeter than a dry white vermouth. And these, while they do play well with gin, you know, in a, in a martini. Um, these will also play well with, um, with rum and uh, uh, tequila. So keep that in mind just from a, when you're fiddling around with some cocktails. This immediately comes across as much more herbal, which I wasn't expecting. Um, very much uh, thyme spice, or thyme, or the herb thyme. Interesting. So this is much more viscous, right? So, you, you know, there's there's more sweetness. I, I suspect there's more sugar in here. Um, even though this guy is a higher alcohol content, I guess that makes sense because sugar brings the alcohol content down. Um, so, but this guy, so it's a totally different mouth mouthfeel. Very lean, crisp, clean, almost, I would say like a, a light body wine. Think of it like a, more like a Sauvignon Blanc body wine. This is a heavier weight, um, quite tasty actually, I'm surprised. Think of more of a weight of like a Chardonnay, a little heavier on the palate. Um, again, this is something I think with, you know, on, on the rocks with a, <clears throat> with a lemon twist, or, you know, that'd be great. Both of these can be, can be had on their own. Wow, all right. So I gotta be honest, so, so like I said, the white side of this equation just really surprised me. Um, as you can see from these bottles, uh, you know, there's been a fair amount of these vermouths have been consumed. We know, I know what we're getting into. Um, and these are three of my favorite that I've come across so far. There are a couple others that I really enjoy uh, I'll put I'll put some suggestions in in the show notes, um, but we're gonna go now to Spain. Okay, now sweet vermouths, right? Same process, right? Starts with wine, gets fortified, and then sugar and spices, uh, sugar yeah, sugar and spices, herbs are added. Um, it, because these are red, right? It doesn't necessarily mean they were made with red wine. They definitely could have been. I'm not positive on either of them, but. You know, there's again. They could use caramel, caramel as the sweetener that can darken the, uh, certainly darken the wine. This guy, the Vermouz, that's fun. Uh, this is from Spain, and um, it's 13% uh, alcohol by volume. So as as I wouldn't have necessarily expected that as we're going down this this path, we are gradually going down the alcohol by volume. Uh, 18, 16, 13. 16, 16.5. All right, there we go. 18, 16, 13, and then we go back up 16, 16.5. But let's, um, let's have a taste of this one here. 
This guy's a nice kind of cool, uh, it's, it's a lighter, lighter color. This looks more like a red wine. If you were just looking at this in the glass, you would think uh, this is a Pinot Noir. Um, let's see what it uh, smells like and tastes like. So this is very herbal. Um, this tastes like a, like a bouquet of herbs of oregano, um, thyme, marjoram, with, with some grapes around, you know, around the, um, you know, in the bowl. Mm. And so this guy is, it, it, this is so delicious, this one. Really great on the rocks, the orange twist, but also perfect, it, you know, marries really well with whiskey. But this guy is, um, I would say, it's like a wine drinker's vermouth, all right? So when you're looking for some vermouths, uh, you yeah, know, have a look at this bottle. It's, uh, it's worth picking up. I happen to randomly pick it up off of a shelf at my uh, local uh, wine shop and I'm really happy about it. Okay, we're moving into Torino. This is Punta Mess. This is a, so this says, Un Punto di Vermouth and Mezzo di Amaro. So, while this is a vermouth di Torino, it does not meet all of the requirements to uh, kind of get that real, uh, that like doc, DOC classification, because that does exist in Torino. I'm gonna, I'll double check uh, the facts on that, but um, you know, there are specific rules around what could be in there, what kind of, you know, every, all the herbs have to be local, six, between 16 and 22% alcohol, things of that nature. But this is made in Torino, and um, so, I imagine, right, that that's that's why these uh, these vermouths have gotten so much exposure because of because uh, of that heritage. Now, you can, I don't know if you can see this. This is very this is much more of a brown uh, color to it, right? If you if I see how I'm, I'm swirling it, much more brown. Where this guy was red. If I, I probably should do them side by side, but that's this is more traditional on the vermouth on the sweet vermouth side of what a, what a vermouth will look like. So it won't look like you're having a glass of, of, of red wine. Um, it might look like you're having a glass of really old red wine that could have uh, could have turned. But uh, Punta Mess is a little more bitter than some of the vermouths out there. Let's see if uh, see if I'm remembering correctly. There's a distinct though candied sweetness on this. Um, not can maybe not candy, like candied spices. So if you have some autumn spices, some Christmas spices, and you and then but and somehow there's sugar mixed in. So think clove, cinnamon, um, you know, nutmeg, mixed in some sugar. That's what this smells like. It's perfect. <laughs> It'd be perfect at Christmas time. Although I don't typically drink vermouth at Christmas time. And I'm getting a black licorice, a whiff of like, uh, you know, the black licorice ch chuckles specifically, the little sugary coated uh, gumdrops. So this guy, it, there's, it's bitter, there's bitterness here when it, when, if you're drinking this straight. So, I mean, it is viable, right? It almost has like, um, you get like coffee notes, right? Coffee, espresso, you, know, you can kind of picture those spices and licorice turning into coffee and espresso. But I think you have to, you have to be a coffee drinker. You have to be somebody who enjoys bitter, bitter um, spirits. If you enjoy Amaro, um, stay tuned. You know, in two episodes, we're gonna do an Amaro masterclass with a lot more than five things to taste. Um, but it's really nice as a either, you know, an aperitivo, they call like this, they call this an aperitivo on here, aperitivo originale. But, um, you know, this is certainly good on its own. Now, you when you think of um, mixing, actually, I'll, I'll get into mixing Manhattans up later. These are all really good.
don't think of vermouth as just an additive, right? Think of it as a wine that is also a cocktail ingredient. Think of it that way. Okay, and now the last one, the big boy. Carpano Antica Formula. This is um, a sweet vermouth that has a lot of vanilla in it. So, if you enjoy, um, well, things on the sweeter side, you are going to, and if you enjoy vanilla, you're gonna absolutely love this. Now, some of these vermouths are very happy being in the background, right? But this Carpano Antica, it lets you know that, um, hey, I'm here and you need to pay attention to me, right? So, you know, I kind of think of a lot of these vermouths sort of like my dad, right? You'll know he's in the room, but you might not notice right away. Um, and you might not notice all the time. At different points, you'll, you'll, you'll notice him, you know, they pop up here and there. This is sort of like my mom. It's like, you know that Carpano Antica has walked in the room and you know it from start to finish, right? Every minute. So, um, I say, I use both of those, uh, both of these descriptions with, with lots of love. Um, and if you know my parents, you'll know exactly, you're probably laughing right now. Okay, so this guy, this has been, um, this is really the, what, what got me into exploring vermouth because I had, um, I was asking a bartender at a bar once, you know, making a Manhattan, like, really, what, where should I go with the, you know, he asked me what, what vermouth I want. I'm like, I have no idea, just, you know, whatever you use. He's like, all right, let me pour you a couple just so you, so you understand the difference and maybe you pick one out. And I remember, I think he lined this one up with two others and just completely, um, you know, rocked my world, so to speak. You smell the sweetness, you smell a little of the vanilla, um, and again, there's there's a softer note of licorice that I'm getting in this, so interesting. So, it's a little stronger, like a little more, there's a little more of a, an alcohol whiff to that, but there is a vanilla brown sugar, um, just, combination with with uh with her with a, with a combination of herbs so you know the herbal notes are there but the this one is just much more um much more sweet and subdued so and and just loaded loaded with vanilla so i need room i need to make room in the fridge so we're going to finish this bottle right now and um i hope you enjoyed this vermouth episode when it comes to, uh, before I go, when it comes to cocktails, right? If you want your cocktail to be softer and warmer, right? We're talking Manhattans right now. Use the anti Carpano, Carpano Antica. If you want, if you like your cocktails to be a little more punchy and bitter, then go Punta Mess. If you see them, you know, on the, on the bar behind, um, you know, behind your, your, uh, your favorite bartender. Two more things to note. Vermouth, after it's open, needs to be refrigerated. It is not a, it is a wine, not a spirit. So think of it that way. Because it's a wine, it will go bad. Now this, these things in the fridge will last, uh, you know, up to a month, even longer at times. Um, so keep that in mind. And then just remember, we were talking about how vermouth is aromatized, but it's fortified first. So all vermouths are fortified wines, but not all fortified wines are vermouth. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for the love. I hope you've had a good Thanksgiving and you are looking forward to a happy holiday season in December, whether that is Hanukkah or Christmas. And I will see you soon. Cheers, folks.